there's very intentionally no roadmap that the roadmap section of the website was called not a roadmap and i spoke about how i don't like roadmaps because the space changes so quickly you say what you're going to do and then by the time you do it you, the, the, your community is like well why'd you do that you should have done this other thing that just launched yesterday that they already want so um that was the the beginning of zen academy and um actually launched two things at the same time it was zen academy and the 333 club um two different tokens one was priced at 0.033 eth and it was an open edition for two weeks so anyone could come and mint however many they wanted gas was crazy high at the time and i wanted to give people that flexibility and the other the 333 club um it was capped at 333 tokens and it's slightly separate thing to onboarding people it was i'd been doing consulting and advising and, and sort of like working with a lot of projects and i had way more inbound than i could work with especially then and i said well instead of me working with three projects over the course of two months let me sell an nft that allows me to work with a lot more people and projects and create a community of builders and founders that can help each other and anyway they, they both launched in november last year and it was basically literally just a discord server and um whew, god we're coming up on a year now and it's 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 mostly still just a discord server but like we're we've been building a lot under the surface and like, I think it's going to explode over the next few months. Yeah. In, in terms of like, uh, expectations and stuff, it's just, it really is impossible. And, and because I personally had set those really low expectations, the people that bought the NFT and stayed part of the community, I think, um, like I, I feel really privileged that the community of Zen Academy, I've never once had anyone be like, why aren't you doing more? Why isn't the floor price going up? That has just literally never happened. And, and it's just like, I, I feel like it's some enigma and anomaly in the space that that exists, but um, it, it has allowed me to really take my time, build out a team, do things methodically and slowly. Um, and like, we, we just don't deal in hype tactics either. It's not like I never say, hey guys, there's a big announcement coming next week. You're going to be really excited for it. And anything like that, that might have a short-term influence on the floor price. Or you won't believe who we just partnered with. No, we just, <laughs> if we partner with someone, we partner, we announce it. And, and if it has an impact, it does. If not, then we, we don't do an announcement of an announcement of an announcement. Although once I tried it and, and I hated it and uh, we'll not be. Which, which one was that? What was it? So uh, in... During this year at NFT NYC, uh, we had just created a new website and, and that launched. And it was just like a landing page. It's got some nice music and an image of the castle, Zen Academy, as a, as a visual representation. And we have been working on like a PFP project and a whole bunch of other stuff. And we just announced, um, oh, uh, all right, the next stage of Zen Academy is beginning, uh, snapshot coming dot 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 and and just like kind of kept it a bit open ended and hyped and there was like a little bit of buzz around it it nothing went crazy floor price didn't spike or crash or anything like that um but it just didn't feel right and like as time's gone on and as we've developed more pfp stuff it's, we, we've come to the realization or i have that uh well, maybe like the initial plan we had of taking a snapshot and doing something with that might not be the most effective way. We're going to do something else. And I will just going to be more upfront and communicate exactly what our plans are and then execute on them. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'd love everything you said, except for you not doing announcements of announcements. That's one of my favorite things <laughs> of the entire space. Uh, when he's bag holding, when he's bag holding. It yeah, is. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah. I, I, th I think Doodles kind of like perfected that oh, whole meta, the best. and then yeah. and then they went ahead and recently they've just been overcorrecting. They're like, okay, before we should announce that we're going to announce something in a month, <laughs> now, but now we're just, just not like, going to ever say we're anything be silent. ever. <laughs> yeah, which <laughs> I, 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 you know, I'm a huge fan of overcorrections. I think I think that's the one of the, <laughs> the great secrets of life. Um, yeah. That's awesome though. I, I love the I love the philosophy of like not having like a roadmap though because it's like yeah. I can't tell you how many projects I saw that launched in like May and April that were promising to create like a a what like a game and game a brand yeah and I'm and I'm like I'm just thinking about all of like the projects that have just been you know just dumping millions of dollars into the development of that and it's like now no one wants a game. Yeah, in my opinion. It's, so like, or, no, it's, it's or, or they've like, been reporting yeah. that they are dumping millions of dollars yeah, into of that, um, but dumping millions of dollars elsewhere. I, you know, I can think of some notable examples of projects that had come out promising games uh, <laughs> that that had slightly rocky launches uh, recently and a while ago. Um, and you know, Zeneca, I think that like something that you said that I really, really agree with. 
um, which is like never said, by the way, is that roadmaps are sort of inherently flawed because oh, they're terrible. We because it's such an agile space, and not only that, like ho the average holder wants you to do what they want to do when they want to do it, and what holders want changes with the space. Um, so what they want when you launch is going to be very different than what they want uh, two months after you launch. Um, and you sort and of and your holder base is totally different as well. Like exactly, the, the it's not even that, the same people. It's constantly changing, and, yeah. and you have people that buy it. Um, Let's use uh, Moonbirds as an example. You have people that got them for free from Proof. You have people that bought them at like, they minted at two and a half ETH. You have people that bought them at seven ETH. You have people that bought them 10. And then you had people that bought them at 40 ETH. And everyone's got different expectations. And like the team didn't make 40 ETH from the sales. So then they can't necessarily give you a car. But um, it's just like, you know, different projects. It's, even if you use one ETH versus 0.03 is the mint price. It's, it's just like, it's impossible to please everyone. Well, it's one of those things, and it's one of those things that you almost have to, it's like, try, you have to feel it to understand it almost as a trader, right? And it informs decisions that you can make as a, as a founder in that, you know, like if, if I buy an extraordinarily speculative asset at a massively inflated price, right? If I buy a, uh, let's say I, bu uh, I bought a mutant ape at 40 ETH, right? Uh, because I decided to buy it at 40 ETH and somebody else sold it for that amount does not mean that I can go in with the expectation of being delivered 40 Ethereum of value if I bought mm. it for the express purpose of gambling on a speculative asset. Because... One, yeah. I mean, in, sorry, you have maybe a bad example because they obviously have uh, make it, made an inordinate, inordinate amount of money mm. off of royalties and other sales. But that that's kind of a separate discussion, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, like you can look at what a team has done. Like you can look at how they priced their offering initially. Like this is what we think mm. we, our product is valued at. Yeah. Um, here's what we are going to deliver by you paying that price. And then these things get released into the wild. Um, and then emotions get really complicated. Yeah. And it gets more complicated when you have founders, like you said, who really intentionally lean into this, right? And wording gets murky. Um, and it's like, well, and then you have sort of this, this weird dynamic of like, oh, the folders feeling like, you know, you you convinced me to buy it at this price. And then founder's like, oh, did I? And then the, what the value that is supposed to be delivered is gets really confusing because of sort of, again, this, the speculative nature of um, the NFT market. But I think that's, really poignant what you said about the fact that you know expectations constantly change and within one single nft collection that has experienced large price fluctuations th those people aren't even the same demographic probably like yeah. whoever spent two and a half eth on moonbirds is likely an entirely different sort of investor than somebody who spent 40 eth on it you know mm -hmm. what i mean um so you know i was talking to llama me and llama were on a space earlier um and it's like horse blinders. You know what I mean? Like if you have a, a project founder and community who are truly aligned and I think that have that trust established, the best thing in my opinion that a founder can do is to not play into a lot of that noise and to focus on the core objective of the collection, whatever that is and how, you know, ideally it's being communicated clearly. Um, but I think that the only way that that really exists is via sort of fluid, um, and evolving offerings. And it's almost sort of like the, the whole roadmap thing is like a, it's like a fallacy almost. It just makes no sense. Yep. Could not agree more. It's, it's just wild. It's, it's, but I think it's a sign of the immaturity of the space and, and just how new it is. It's, it's so new. Like we haven't really had a asset class like NFTs before. Like we've had similar things. We've had regular investments. We've had collectibles. We've had art. We've had all others, but we haven't had online digital collectibles that are on blockchains and that are so easily tradable and with markets that are unregulated. It's just, it's, it hasn't existed quite like this before. And, uh, every month it changes. It will, it used to be every week and then it became every month. And now it's every two or three months. It seems like the meta shifts. And I think that is a sign that it is maturing. And, um, we're seeing a lot more, uh, just the market participants are a lot more discerning with what they buy and, and where they spend their money. Whereas like a year ago, it was just like any random animal JPEG would just mint out and 
pumped to 10 ETH or like 10 X rather some to 10 ETH. But now it's, uh, you know, people are going, Oh, is that really worth 0.1 point oh, 0.15? That's a high min price. You know, back in April, we had like two ETH min prices, three ETH. And it's just, it keeps changing, but I think it's moving in a good direction slowly, but surely. It's growing pains. Yep. Yeah. Definitely growing pains. I'm not going to lie that I've, I've thrown like 0.2 on some mints in like March and April that I, ne- I don't even know what the, what the roadmap was. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, uh, Oh yeah. We've all degen. Yeah. It was, a lot. <laughs> it was terrible. 